Hi and welcome to Pencil Bank in our presentation of Transtema. My name is Marcus Almerud and I'm an analyst here at the bank. So Transtema installs, maintains and services communication networks such as mobile and fixed phones as well as fiber networks. The spread between profit and earnings is continuously very high and valuation is far too low. We have a fair value range of 38 to 40 Swedish krona and the share is at 17. The reason for speaking today is the follow up after Q2 and the strong share price reaction that we've seen over the past month. We think that the th reason for the sharp fall is the delay of the 5G project. Let's go through what's happened. So on March 27th, one of the larger telco operators announced that they would postpone some of their 5G installations. Other operators have since followed. There has since been no further deceleration, but there have also been no signals that, the restarts, that restarts are imminent. On 22nd June, Transtema announced that as a response to the delayed projects, it would adapt its cost structure, that it would restructure the part of the business that is making these installations. The agility the group has shown in this situation is in our view very positive. They acted swiftly and forcefully to the change market conditions. With the impact on restructuring not being immediate, there was a mismatch between revenues and costs in the short term, and hence we saw quite dramatic margin pressure in the second quarter. The margin contracted to 3% from 8% a year ago. But it's worthwhile pointing out here that if I strip this out, if I adjust for this part of the business, the margin, uh, the margin on average was in line with the target, around 7%. So it's a very isolated problem. The restructuring is now done and the impact will be seen gradually during the second half and will be, will be seen in full at the end of the year. And also in July, the order intake from 5G increased. So the savings on restru this restructuring is a 60 million krona. Let's put this in perspective. The group made EBITDA of around 180 million krona in 2022. On our estimates, this will grow to 220 million krona by 2024. That is a 40 million krona delta. Now, top line grew by 27% in, in the first half. And there will also be EBITDA contribution from this. In other words, I think our forecasts are conservative. Savings of 60 million krona and top line growth contri contribution. And we have a 40 million krona delta. On these estimates, the share is trading at EV EBITDA of three and PE of five. I think this is too low. Margins will bounce back. The company will continue to grow. New business and acquisitions will compensate for the closure of the copper network. New business is doing well. They have, for instance, signed new contracts for charging infrastructure during the quarter, and this should be meaningful business in 2024. Now, the delay in 5G was unwelcome, but we believe it's temporary. The installation should return, and in the meantime, the cost base is, is, ad is adapted. Ericsson's mobility report, which was published in June 2023, shows that the 5G penetration in Western Europe is only 13% compared to, to North America, where it's 41%. Europe is clearly behind, and there is no reason that this should continue to be the case over time. Postponent, postponement is the active word, not cancellations. And the agility the company has shown is positive. The company will continue to grow. Current estimates for 2024 is conservative, and valuation is highly attractive. Thank you.